Okay, so I have here is a bubble gearbox from a Simplicity 725. When I was looking into, when I rebuilt the last one of my other tractor a few years ago, I was absolutely amazed at the lack of information on these things. And even looking to see if there's like a factory service manual or anything, they have exploded parts diagrams, but I've never actually seen a procedure or anything as like as far as how much backlash or like there's just, I couldn't believe the lack of information that was out there. And basically from what I gather is the amount of backlash that should be between the gears should be little to none. And that's pretty much it. When you take the bubble gearbox off, you're going to want to look at each one of these teeth to see if there's excessive wear. If these things ran out of oil and they ran them dry, these gears would be all chewed up. They'd be like razor blades. They'd be super chewed. And at this point, no, I haven't looked into them in a few years, but the last time I looked into them, they were really expensive. They were still available, but I don't know if they still are. So these things are getting a little bit tougher to find. A lot of people think that a bubble gearbox is bad when they wiggle the shaft and there's excessive play and that could be the case but there's keyways that hold this one and this inner gear as well and sometimes the key is just wallowed out and that might be all you're feeling so until you really pop this open you can't really be 100 percent sure that a bubble gearbox is bad this one was good it wasn't really leaking but i'm rebuilding the whole tractor i'm swapping in a, a briggs vanguard motor into it just like i did my other one and i'll get into that in another video but Basically, so when it's bolted in the tractor, you got your plate here. You know, you have the two plates that bolt on between the transmission and the bevel gearbox, and then you have this pulley here. Well, in order to take this off, you take off the two bolts that are here, and then you take off this big nut. You usually want to hit it off with an impact because it's one of those pinch nuts or lock nuts or whatever you want to call them. These are little tabs, so it's going to come off hard. Now, this pulley here locks this whole thing together. When this is loose, the whole shaft can move. So when this is tight, it sucks. So when this is tight, it's going to pull the whole thing in, and that's what's going to take up your plate. So when you take off the pulley, you take off that outer plate. Behind that plate, you're going to find these shims. Don't lose these. These are going to be important for later. And there's a big obsolete seal that's in here, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But before we get to that, just pull the little sleeve out. That's what the seal rides on. And now you're left with just the gear and the shaft. Uh, which way do we go? Bear with me, it's been a couple years since I've worked on one of these. So you just tap it out. See, there's just a little key here and your gear is loose. Now, just to note, before I did this, all I did was pop the cover off and I pulled the keys out ahead of time. That's all I did here. So pull this, just tap it with a dead blow hammer or some kind of soft hammer. You obviously don't want to damage your threads or mushroom it over. Pull the shaft through. And in order to get this out, you have to pop this key out. If there is any hint of damage on this, just replace it. If there's any, if you feel any slop at all, just replace it. You want to start out right, right off the bat. So right here you gotta be careful because there's a burr. It's a little bit of a burr, so I can't pull this shaft this shaft through. Not oh, aggressive enough. Ah, here we go.
It's just snug enough. All right, and the shaft is out. I'm gonna spend a little more time making sure there's no sharp edges or anything that can break off. But overall, the shaft is pretty decent. I'm gonna polish up this whole thing. You can see where the seal erode. You wanna have that nice and smooth so that it doesn't chew up a brand new seal. You don't wanna damage it, obviously. So this is in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of corrosion on the other side is okay. Um, again, I'm just gonna polish it, but the fact that it's pitted, this is outside of where the pulley would ride. So you'd have the inner pulley that goes down to the PTO, and then you have another pulley there that would go back to the um, mule drive if you have a rototiller or something. And even then, as long as this is smooth and it's not all chewed up, it's just fine. It's the keyway that you want to watch for because if that's really loose, that's when things can break and get messy. Here's my first gear. It looks really good, looks really healthy. Just nice little scuff marks. See where it's been riding, or how it's been wearing. Looks really, really good. Just gonna slide it on here so I don't forget which one is which. I don't remember if that matters or not, but I'd rather just put things back together the way they came out. All right. So right now, that all that's holding in this shaft is this bolt right here. It's just this little guy. This bearing, everything about this thing was really good. I just kind of want to take it apart, inspect it, make sure there's nothing outstanding, any outstanding problems. So you got this inner bearing here, and then out here, there's a needle bearing. This guy right here where my finger is. I would replace that regardless. Even if you decide to really use these big ball bearings, that needle bearing sees a lot of wear, and you can definitely get a lot of up and down movement in there. So it's just that right there. Yeah, I know that happened on the way out. So that's something I'll have to tackle later. So that's it for teardown. These things are very simple. And if you've been reading it online, this seal right here, I'm gonna show you a little trick to this guy because this guy has been obsolete for quite some time. Let's see if I can pop it out real quick. Nope, she wants to be stubborn. Oh, for Pete's sake. Nope, can't get out that way. Sometimes I just pull, use a seal puller and pull that stuff out, but Things kind of being a turd. So There, easy peasy. 
So you got one ball, another ball bearing here. Again, this one feels really good. This seal here, if you're looking online, there are a lot of people that come up with different solutions because this seal is just gone. It's roughly about a half inch thick and it's a double wall. Now, it's so the, the sidewall here is a lot thicker because it's meant to support that gear, the bearing, and then you got the seal and then it's getting sandwiched against that plate. So it's supporting a pretty good amount. And the seal that's a replacement for this one is a lot thinner and some people say just double up the number of seals to take up the amount of space in here between the bearing and the outside where the plate is and I'm not particularly a big fan of that just because of how thin that wall is so I'll show you a solution something that I came up with a couple years ago that seemed to work really really well because maybe the double seal you know st double stacking the seals was just fine for most applications, you know, where you're just mowing the lawn or just taking it to tractor shows. I work my tractors and I work them hard. I'm constantly having them with loads of, tra um, you know, big loads on trailers and towing things, even cars around the yard. And I work my tractors. They're, they're not just for show. And uh, I wanted something I know is going to hold up. So I'll get into that in my next video. The purpose of this is just to show you the teardown. Um, at this point, just take a socket and an extension, just pop out the bearings, you know, the needle bearings. I, but like I said, if, even if you reuse these ball bearings, I would at a very minimum replace the, that needle bearing here for the input shaft. I think that's really important because every single bubble gearbox I've taken apart, every single one, that bearing is tired. And you do not want those to go bad because the second those go bad and it's wobbling around, you're going to get a lot of wear on your gears and you're just going to... You just gotta destroy it. And like I said, those are getting a lot harder to find and a lot more expensive. So that's it for now. Uh, catch you next time.